Hi, I'm John Herbert. I am the non-game bird biologist for the Rhode Island Division of Fish and Wildlife. Non-game birds, they are birds that aren't hunted. So these are your common backyard birds like cardinals, uh, chickadees, and robins. Uh, but it also incorpor incorporates uh, bald eagles, red-tailed hawks, uh, herons, egrets, gulls, cormorants, birds that you'll see along the coast or in the forest. So we're out here at West Island today. This time of year it's closed uh, to the public um, because of the nesting colonial water birds. Uh, so we come out to get the count to monitor the birds, but it's a very briefly and controlled manner. So we come in, stay away from most of the nest, count the birds, and then leave. We want to do that because this time of year when the nests are, the eggs are ready to hatch or sometimes they're already hatched and the baby birds really need attention. They need protection from the sun. They, they, they can't get too hot or too cold. And then once they hatch, then they need to be fed uh, frequently. So these colonial water bird surveys um, have been done in Rhode Island since the late 70s, so approximately 40 years. Um, the different islands and different, different beach locations throughout, throughout Rhode Island um, this data is very valuable because we can see the long-term trends. So species like double crushed the cormorants were nesting here um, during, during this time period, but now we have a healthy population. And these aren't the only species, these are the species we're seeing today, but if we go further into the bay, we can have different uh, nesting water birds such as great egrets, snowy egrets, glossy ibis. Uh, and yellow crown night hair. And these are birds that if you're driving along the coast, you see a marsh, these tall, these taller birds that are wading in the water, usually trying to catch some fish to eat. These birds will nest in trees uh, in the bay that we also monitor. So this time of year, uh, ways to help uh, wildlife such as uh, nesting birds is to limit the, the disturbance. So here on, on West Island, we have, there's posted signs saying it's closed this time of year. Um, that's really important. So we're coming out here one day, very briefly, limiting our disturbance, and we're trained uh, professionals. Um, but if a lot of other people came out here with their boats, this colony would um, stop existing. They would stop nesting here, uh, which is not something we want. Um, that, and that includes all water birds. So if you're if you're on a boat in the bay and you see you see birds, you maybe you might be able to see them perched in trees. It's good to limit your distance. Uh, from those islands and if you're on the beaches so our birds like a piping plover we rope off those those areas for a reason it's just to protect the bird while it's nesting and then after hopefully after a successful nest the baby chicks grow up nice and healthy they'll fly away um, so those are really important ways um, everyone can really help uh, our native wildlife populations exist and continue for future generations I love my job because I get to do awesome things like this, help animals, help, help our wildlife, our native wildlife. When I'm long and, re and retired, kids that are here in Rhode Island today or wherever in the world can come to Rhode Island, enjoy our wildlife and ha have healthy populations uh, for future generations.